totally. Uh, two main consequences, the gravity electric field and the random motion of E. We, we also saw that the uh, mutual coherence of these particles of particle voids C sets up in any mutual, I mean physical coherence, uh, gravitation, a uh, radial density uh, gradient of E from the two effects. The mechanical response of voids C is to that gradient is a churning force, and the E density gradient as a result is a GE field. And we saw how widespread in the universe uh, it was. It is, it does seem to be. The random particle and result in the motion. This is where we, the present talk really takes off. In this play, my analogy interprets the famous Michelson Moore result, having shown that to the, to the limited precision then available, that's very really important uh, quantification. Uh, uh, the ether is particle tied in its motion, enough it's not independent in its motion, and therefore the idea that there wasn't any, uh, 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 an ether was, was a one uh, of alternative but modern argument. Uh, uh, and electromagnetic waves reach a small astronomical pass with ether is in random motion related to the P and T there, the gas to P and T. So I now consider the five consequences of that random motion and their huge implication for cosmology. <laughs>
related to pure physics uh, in the airport car, uh, because my first class physicist managing the, the establishment saw it was very important. Um, uh, I, and the color of that patch, patch of brightness, is solar. It's not blue. Um, and the attenuation, this is usually uh, anything that's happening uh, and it affects distance and estimate. And the reason that the redshift uh, uh, comes up is uh, the cosmic microwave background. Uh, corresponding accelerations of electric charge. And these will generate synchrotron radiation at frequencies that correspond to the gas plus and the temperature of the extended region through which it comes from. So this temperature may indeed be the, gas, uh, the temperature of intergalactic space slightly enhanced when the path passes something hot uh, or, or depressed when it passes through no such hot crash. And so this raises the whole question about the Big Bang we lost what has been regarded as a crucial indication of the event. Sensitivity of the method of the RTV redshift to particle ionization. Neutral uh, particles will move the ether about only by that sucking effect on, on the ether. But ions will move the ether direct directly by up to 36 orders of magnitude because they're acting directly on the ether, not by the, the company effect. Uh, and this is the ratio of the uh, force between the, uh, two identical particles, uh, the, uh, the electromag uh, electric force and the uh, gravitational force. So the plasmas are still a, uh, um, atmospheres and galaxies are expected to impose very large, or uh, potentially large, uh, um, RTV redshift of emergent radiation and must be allowed for dynamically in any variable calculation as to the longevity of the group uh, or in assessing the relative positions of atoms with galaxies and clusters. And the velocity equivalent values uh, will throw the stars in binaries where you've got an anchor as the well system is doing for the other stars that are doing it, a range up to more than 200 kilometers and it's much more for spirals where you've got some other sort of thing for anchorage. Note the solar redshift that is steeply with line reversing mode and across the disk in a way that's consistent with the zenith angle dependent RGB action, but not GR gravitational production based on mass and protons, which isn't the normal in situ. And this is Because uh, uh, 
which is the applying the relativistic model of it, has the effect of cutting down on the high end distance velocity, making the near ones appear relatively faster. And that is the entire reason for, uh, for the dark energy of the It's entirely because the uh, redshift has been regarded as velocity. So if the chronic redshift isn't velocity, if that's a dark energy values, uh, vanishes, and so does Einstein's truth, for example. Non-expanding continuous creation of cosmology. Um, <coughs> I, uh, we found that particles are vertical constructs and random motion of these are either having principle while the couple of shared expressions the potential for auto creating such vorticity particles. The random motion can be, uh, it's not going to be this, it's going to share motion. So, uh, especially particle anti particle powers. So our CD cosmology is that the universe began in its undefinable distant past as a, an infinite extent of randomly moving ether, from whose motion energy all mass in the universe has progressively been created and is ongoing. And that's gravitational interactions and large sub formations by an energy environment uh, higher. So the rate of water creation around that place is enhanced, providing a positive feedback for the formation and motion of both gravity clusters. And uh, here we can look into the chemistry of this. Story because um, very much of relativity means that. Uh, to, to, to let's understand what that means. Uh, um, it's typical of globular star clusters which abound in the halos of spiral galaxies and in many um, as yet undeveloped galaxies as well. Not the not globular clusters, but the rest of the sea. And the Big Bang cosmology popped through. Metallicity has been taken to record very early formation of the material before stellar activity built up in metallicity. And the mystery has been how that uh, star or whatever had escaped subsequent uh, stellar recycling to higher metallicity. And in continuous creation uh, cosmology, all newly created material is low metallicity. So it's present inside the central boundaries of uh, galaxies is strongly suggested that it's relatively re recent arrival by axial import from the surrounding uh, aura of enhanced water creation and that uh, is where we see uh, outflow from the disk and uh, driving dust uh, out of which this has been created by stellar activity within the disk uh, dust being the, the product of stellar activity and uh, that confirms that we've got an outward flow mechanism bringing dust from the inside outwards uh, and, and not being able to be chopped further because it's not analyzed and so the G field has uh, a very little protection. Uh, we also saw that similar uh, flow must have been present in the protoplanetary disk uh, and that was what gave us the outflow. And only in the spiral galaxies the pattern is the same. Newly created material forms create a polar in-fall stream is ionized to bulge and is then driven radially in the disk by the G field. So again we have no CDM. Functions of the actual infall streams are the gravity field of the spiral disk will tend to focus these stream, but both in the bulge and as this matter spreads out, it will maintain star formation and growth in the mass of the star, <coughs> and action will maintain the spiral dynamics, which is what I talked about earlier. And the rest will then emerge from the end of this uh, as the cluster grows, so will its corona-like aura and the infall of creative matter uh, from it. So fresh and younger galaxies will tend to form at outside the clusters, and when these masses begin to affect the focusing of the infall streams reaching spiral galaxies further in, those streams could bring about a major morphological transformation to a viral spiral. And here we have details of how this happens. Uh, uh, I, I'm going to read out this, and I suggest you keep my text on the picture. Uh, 
the primary import streams see the import, see the inset here, uh, are supposed to have been deflected by me, uh, spread by me, and deflected and misaligned by the gravitation of other galaxies in the plus. This sets up a couple which forms a rotating bar here called the roller bar, whose length properties uh, length propagates outwards the field driven action uh, until it reaches the and engages lightly with the spiral arm. Uh, orientation of the roller bar's axis is fixed by the external inputs, so it doesn't rotate the spiral arm structure, which continues to rotate about the original axis. Non ionized material in the dust lanes which line spiral arms can gravitate along the bar towards the center. You can see this dust going to the other side. Um, and the fact that they're offset shows that the bar is rotating. Um, uh, being twisted in which spiral by the faster bar rotation at the center, where the input rotation is being applied. In this way, the spiral galaxies are, uh, spiral arms are consumed as they continue to rotate past the uh, um, ends of the bar. Inspection shows that this one has already begun to do this, it has begun to move on past the bar. Um, but other galaxies check their show. Our elliptical loops display an 18 stellar population. Therefore, no internal structure. Um, and the depth of uh, plasma and new star formation. Uh, it's always been recognized that they are yeah. the, the uh, end point of, of galaxies. Um, the stellar formation is just dying. You're not putting in any new material to create a continuing star center. <coughs> Why do they predominate in the central regions of major clusters? Uh, the answer is this. When a cluster grows to the point where the import streams of new matter from outside are captured by other galaxies before they can reach the interior, maintenance of the bars of the uh, 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 will cease. And lacking a supply of plasmogenic material responsive to the D field, the bar will undergo uh, endwise collapse. And the result will be an elliptical galaxy, a patterning action, or which is otherwise a, a, a problem how they can very flat uh, on the spiral, but perhaps in three dimensional uh, patterns are uh, elliptical, and uh, will never been otherwise resolved, being due to the axial rotation of the former part. And the CT expected radial profile of galaxy morphologies in a cluster. We go from uh, a, a creation region on the outside from which all this material has been. A lot of H1 radiation recently been discovered in the whole new, new antenna system in South Africa being set up to look at this H1 radiation, which was not expected, but it's been found. Uh, the zone moments as they see dwarf galaxies that are still under construction, and the Y zone of growing and evolving spirals. The zone of transform, in which transformations to bar are going in, pro are in progress, and the core zone of elliptical, living out their old age. And there is a lot of accumulating evidence uh, that supports that. Now, you can find trans spirals in the outfield, and that may be brought uh, back as being a nucleus for, for, for future cluster. But it doesn't mean to say that it's somehow got out of trust. It means to say that it's one of the starting points for which uh, trust will on. Um, um, back to the beginning, the formation of type 1 smart folds. Uh, the real thing is that uh, it, they must have been typed around in the first place because uh, we set what we see in most of them on right. And we have two very rare examples. In the early stage of formation, Corbett had, uh, this is an early cosmology, if you like, but, but actually it could not happen at any point, but it's a industry on the situation. Yet in the early stage, the core won't have the mass and energy output to attract and ionize actual input. So uh, ionization being low, the G field of the core will have better. So the material converge gravitationally upon the center with conservation of angular momentum, producing a tightly wound spiral. There will be nothing to oppose that in a way usually. But as the mass grows, so will ionization get started, and it will set up this typical actual uh, form and discard for the happening. And we know the rest because we've just been looking at it.
some lots of loose ends. Uh, I'm sorry that this is centralizing too, but they have been covered in other papers, correct me this and another one in my bag. Um, QSOs with lots of intrinsic ratios and a gamma ray but a burst out of the for lighter uh, elements to move the synthesis, which we really need, but where we can. Uh, a source and velocity dependence of inertia. Uh, that has been rooted by several people, but it's really it's very important and that you get the linkage by the, the nature of these and its behavior of ground gravitation. And black holes, uh, I doubt that black holes are structural, simply can't exist. It's completely unattainable for me to have infinite anything in the now, and the structural has infinite gravity in the middle. Uh, uh, and the particle size is uh, the prevention of putting all that stuff into them. They you get mass annihilation. And the advanced electric, eccentric, this is the very even advance and receding. This is a physical evidence of, 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 of the Gerber's uh, sort of resolution of, of, of that. And, and that Gerber's resolution is completely consistent uh, with the, the uh, gravitational intercommunication. But it's not a, a, a fatal situation. That orbit now, and that orbit now have to communicate with each other so that particles self oriented or orientate to produce the gravitational intercommunication uh, into effect. And it's that delay which is crucial. Uh, I've got a diagram in my brain as well. Uh, Sinai affects little time signals in an irritational ether, uh, in effect, the Earth is rotating in an irritational ether environment. It's not carrying ether around it. And so, uh, Stressful relativity and high different losses of propagation around what the Earth, one man, what the other, uh, are, 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 are together. A random electromagnetic excitation by the ether, the pleasure electric effect, a uh, random uh, neutron lifetimes, the error point field, and so on. Uh, the pleasure electric field, uh, again, uh, um, I latched into this back in 1955. If you've got a randomly excited uh, um, surface like a light or cesium, which is uh, near to the release point of its uh, um, uh, ele electron release point, if you uh, put in a, randomly ex a random excitation onto it, it will trigger the, uh, the release of the electron at that point. It doesn't need to say that you've got uh, the whole of a photon energy arriving at that point because the amount of energy required to raise the energy level of the atom which is near the release point is already being provided by the random excitation which is even also present. Uh, well, two main conclusions. Rejecting the two physical absurdities. Uh, the the TM wave can be unitha, uh, and secondly, the particles with finite properties can be of zero size. It appears uh, we have, uh, have illumination on every topic that I have examined so far. I prefer to look for other ones. I've always paid, I've got quite a paper floor. And a special scales ranging from the electron to clusters of galaxies, that's a 10 to the 80, 80 uh, ratio of distances. And that is what you should hope for and expect when you do something in fundamental physics. It's like we're saying, oh, it just applies here. I, mean, I, I can't tell, tell you whether it applies or not. Uh, and apparently there was no big bang. It assumed the variance of, of absurdity of 1b. In other words, particles in finite physical properties can be of zero size. Uh, and but random motion here in CT is a ratio. Random level of absurdity is sufficient. Uh, uh, transmission effect, which along with three others is also a dollar per inch uh, solar spectrum. Uh, many of them, you can, can, can get two or three of the others uh, going. Major objectivity, no big bang, no dark energy, no CEM, ongoing and observable, uh, therefore constrainable by observation, auto creation of matter, and CMD radiation tells us that the actual in the galactic temperature of the, uh, of, of, of the universe or the past temperature. Uh, these are all strictly observational constraints. And um, that's why it's so objective. No hypothesis is uh, 
but everything is being constrained by, by these things, not these things which you have to invent and ask for. But uh, CT surely merits further development by others. Uh, I just wanted to say, overall, I find that these are uh, to be the agents of both the large steady forces that gravitation occur and ubiquitous random electromagnetic perturbation, for which it has a potential to give us quantum physics. So the single ether is capable in these two aspects, the steady motion and the random motion, uh, of doing pretty well uh, the, the kinds of things that we're going to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Questions? Comments? Questions? Yeah. Uh, I want to uh, 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 address some uh, important uh, distinctions introduced by Polish uh, physicists uh, Kowczyński and Trautmann. This is Trautmann is the, the most important. Uh, be between um, geometric as ether yeah. and uh, material ether. Yeah. They uh, understand uh, <coughs> material ether as some substance transmitting, for example, uh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yes, and then uh, geometric ether is just uh, a privileged uh, reference yeah. system. Uh, we so must have physical properties in order to be deciding the velocity of light. See, because the ratio of two if, if there is, uh, they say that uh, if there is a material ether, then it follows that there is also a privileged uh, plane that is geometrical ether. Mm -hmm. So my argument, uh, argument from my talk, was that we need at least geometrical ether. Because if we don't have a geometric ether, uh, then uh, we must uh, uh, conclude that the time does not flow. Yeah. Uh, but the argument, uh, it was at the beginning of your uh, first uh, talk, uh, was also in favor of uh, material. No, not material. I say it is massless, so it's not material. Uh, Yes, yes it's a substantial, or su uh, how uh, you would uh, like to, to, to call it. Uh, maybe there's a, a special kind of matter which is massless. Well, I, I'm saying that the process of generating mass comes higher up in the scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a ground floor, has no mass. And mm -hmm. you build mass by making it into the vortices. Uh, the question about the, the mass of ether is meaningless. Uh, mm. yes. yeah. uh, it, it, it applies only to, to bodies, to, to, maybe to, to fields, some, to some kind. But if it, uh, on the water situation, the rotation would reduce the angular uh, moment, uh, or, um, magnetic moment stories. <laughs> the point is that having no mass, it doesn't fly apart the centrifugal force. But it's not until you get higher up the scale where you've actually got that percentage and you're generating the mass property uh, uh, that you start beginning to get some of your force on this. So the idea that you can have ether going around like this infinitely without any constraint is that uh, it doesn't uh, shoot itself apart. Okay, thanks for that, Mars. Let's go uh, for a coffee break now. 20 minutes for coffee. Your uh, Peter's book is available.